Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and welcome to another free Western brought to you here on the internet by Westerns on the Web, your home for free, classic, family-friendly Western television shows and movies. Get ready for a fantastic Western starring Russell Hayden and Jackie Coogan, and it's called Cowboy G-Man. Y'all are going to enjoy this, I'm pretty sure, and we'll see you right after the show. Cowboy G-Men, hard-riding, fast-shooting, government secret service men of the Old West, working undercover on dangerous special assignments, courageous, resourceful fighters for law and order. The Cowboy G-Men in Ghost Town Mystery, starring Russell Hayden as Pat Gallagher and Jackie Coogan as Stoney Crockett. silver boon in history saw the rich mines of Colorado pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into the pockets of the owners and resulted in the mushroom growth of communities that sprang up overnight. Then, even more suddenly than it started, the great boom was over. Where thousands of people had lived and worked yesterday, today there was no one. The mining towns were dead. What had happened? Why had they so suddenly become ghost towns? Who was responsible? The government wanted answers to these questions. They also wanted to know what had become of certain government records and contracts left in the files of the mine operators. Assigned the task of getting this information and recovering the records were special government investigators Pat Gallagher and Stoney Crockett. Muddy Creek. You know, Pat, it's kind of hard to believe that less than a month ago there was 25,000 people in that town. Yeah, one of the wealthiest mines in the whole state. I wonder what happened. I don't know, but I sure aim to find out. Something must have gone wrong. safer in back of that scatter gun instead of in front of it. Who are you fellas? What you doing in Muddy Creek? Well, my name's Gallagher, ma'am. This is my partner Crockett. We're government agents. Well, now say, I'm right proud to meet you fellas. I'm Miss Jones. You can call me Mamie. I used to run the boarding house around here before the town played out. I'm right sorry I winged in the britches, feller. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. It didn't hurt much. <laughs> How'd you like a nice cup of hot coffee? Well, that'd be real swelling, that's for sure. Well, set yourself down. I got a whole pot full on the stove. Thanks. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Mamie Jones told us that she was the last person in town and was only waiting for the freight wagon to come to pick up her furniture before leaving. Sure, it's nice to have some folks around here for change. It's been mighty lonesome around here lately. Oh, it's <laughs> mighty tasty. Say, uh, how long has this town been deserted? Oh, the last folks pulled out here about two weeks ago, I reckon. Lock, stock, and barrel. <laughs> Some of them didn't even bother to take their stuff, just took off. Well, uh, what happened? Did the mines close down? Mine. The only one. Lady Luck. And I don't reckon it gave out, but the government canceling the silver buying contract sure closed her up. The government canceling their silver contract? That doesn't sound right. Well, that's what they did. Mamie told us that the Lady Luck had a large amount of silver bullion in its vaults. But with the world silver market at a new low, there was no place the bullion could be sold. Well, what about the silver? Did they take it with them? Who knows? Some are saying they did, some are saying they didn't. What are you saying? I ain't saying. 
How far is it from here to the Lady Luck Mine? About two miles, straight up the gulf. Just follow your nose. You can't miss her. I guess we'd better ride out there and take a look, Stoney. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we'll be back later. The sooner the better. For uh, more coffee. <laughs> The information that the government had canceled its contract to buy silver didn't sound right. I had the feeling that there was something wrong behind this whole setup. There's the mine, Stoney. Right. hard to believe that over three million dollars in silver came out of this mine. And if what Mamie said is true, there still may be silver here. Let's take a look. This is a real nice, neat place. Yeah, it looks like somebody else has been looking for information besides us. Well, let's see what we can find. Hey, Tony. Look at this. I thought this was a ghost town. No ghost bullet. There he is. We're behind that old piece of machinery. Oh, yeah, I see him. I'm going to work my way behind him. All right, I'll cover you. Take off. who you shoot at, aren't you? Come on over to the office. Get moving. You fellas got no business this mining office. How does that concern you? Because I'm the caretaker, that's why, and I got orders to keep people away from here. My name's Pete Cult, in case you want to know. So you're the caretaker, eh? You did a nice job around here. If you're the caretaker, why didn't you hail us instead of throwing light at us? Because there's two of you and only one of me, and I wasn't taking any chances. What do you want around here, anyhow? Look, we're government agents. We're here on government business. Well, there's somebody else snooping around here that wasn't on government business. Look at this office. Yeah, we see it. Yeah, somebody made an awful mess of it. Who was it? I don't know. What about the silver that was here? Yeah, where is it? Nobody left any silver here. I'm not so sure about that. We'll see if we can't find some records, if we can find anything in this mess. We went through every paper and book in that office without finding a trace of the government contract, the cancellation order, or the government records. Either they had been stolen before we arrived, or had been hidden. We had to find out which. Well, Stoney. We've gone through everything in this office. You get any ideas? Yeah. What? Food. Good idea. Let's head for Mamie's. I'm not that hungry. Here you are. I guess we were wrong about you. Well, howdy, boys. Mr. Stoney. <laughs> you are just in time. Grub will be ready in just a shake. I thought I told you to stay away from here, Pete Colt. I thought I told you to quit pestering my gal. She ain't your girl. She's my girl. Why, you old coot? I uh, stand where you are, you sidewinder. You ain't gonna do nothing to get out of here. Put up that gun before I shove it down your gullet. Now, wait a minute, boys. And you, I see after you, mind your own business. Give me that to Hog Lake. Come on. Give it to me. 
And you, Peacock, stop talking so big. Ain't gonna be no fighting in my place. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to butt in, but what's all the trouble? Oh, that old desert rat, Hassie Yamper Simpson, keeps shining up to Mamie. You're darn right, I do. And what's more, we're going to get married. Oh, Hassie Yamper, how can you talk like that? I ain't give my word to anyone yet. Well, I think as long as we're in Mrs. Jones's boarding house, we ought to all sort of try to behave ourselves, don't you think? I didn't start it. Well, well Mamie knows I wouldn't do nothing to cause her any trouble. Don't you, honey? Well, that's fine. <laughs> Didn't I hear somebody say something about food? You sure did. Ain't got nothing but beans and bacon, but it's mighty tasty. Sit down. <laughs> Go on. Hey, Peacock, get out of that chair. Sit down right there. Out, I see you. Out, 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 over there. This chair chair is for Mr. Crockett. <laughs> Stony. <sighs> I guess you know this country pretty well, eh, old timer? Oh, like the palmer my dad blame him. I've been prospecting these hills for over, oh, 20 years. Did you ever make a strike? Well, I, I ain't saying I haven't. I haven't said I ain't. I, I used to ain't saying yet. This is the ain't saying as crowd I ever met yet. Here you are, boys. I'll get the coffee and some nice fresh bread. Dig in. Say, uh, what are you two cowpokes doing in this part? You ain't miners. No, we're government men. Government men? Well, you won't find nothing around here. You might as well go back where you come from. Wait a minute, old timer. How do you know what we're looking for? I don't know. And I wouldn't tell you if I did. You stay away from me. What bit him? He's acting all fired strange. I'm going to follow her. So where did Pete and Hacienda get off to? I don't know. They must have had business somewhere else. Well, we'll be mighty cozy without them. <laughs> I made this coffee extra strong, Mr. Stoney, just for you. How far is it from here to Nevadaville? Oh, about eight miles. Well, that's where the Boomer Mine's located. I know, we're riding over there in the morning. What's the best trail? Well, there's a couple of trails. Shortest one, though, is through Kansas Gulch. You go due north of here about a mile, and you angle off to the right, and then you... Wait a minute, I'll draw you a map. <laughs> now, this here is Muddy Creek. You go north to about there, then you take the right-hand fork, and then you take the right-hand angle. Right here, you ford the creek, follow the gulch up the path about a half mile. Really. Bureau of Mines, Contract Department, Washington, D.C. Where'd you get this letterhead? Well, I, I, I don't rightly know. I'll think. This is very important to us. Well, it's just a little piece of paper somebody has. Why, I don't know why you get so all fight excited about a little old piece of paper. Because it's... You all right, Stoney? Yeah. Doggone snake in the weeds. Nobody but a double-dyed polecat would do a thing like that. From the way Mamie sounds, she's all right, too. See anything, Pat? No. Well, I guess I better take a look outside. Oh, no, you don't, Stoney Crockett. You're not going out there. Why not? You want to be a prime target for a waiting gunman? That's what the government pays me for. I'll take the chance. Oh, you'd never find him in those deserted buildings at night. She's right, Stoney. We'd be wasting our time. Who do you think it was, Mamie? How should I know? You said this town was deserted. Yet somebody tried to kill one of us. You think it could have been Pete or that old guy, Hacienda Simpson? No, it couldn't have been them. How do you know? Well, uh, oh, they wouldn't have no reason. Why not? Well, fellas, why don't you just stop fretting, get a good night's sleep, and work it all out in the morning? Oh, all right. I tell you what, I'll give you my two best beds. You can have the one with sheets. Grab the lamps, fellas, and follow me. Oh, <laughs> 
Don't quit her on me, Pat. But she's a good cook. Uh, and a bad housekeeper. Yeah, it looks like we had visitors last night. Yeah. I wonder where Mamie is. Hey, Mamie! Oh, Mamie! No, it's cold. I've got a hush she'll be back, Stoney. Let's head for Nevadaville. I was beginning to get a pretty good idea of what was behind the reason for the ghost town. I hoped to find some answer at Boomer Mine, two miles past Nevadaville. Looks like it, Stoney. What are we looking for this time? Two things, the government contracts and the production reports for the last three months. What do you want with the production reports? I've got a feeling these miners left a lot of silver bullion on hand when they closed down. Well, let's get at it. If I could find the production records and they indicated that I was right about the silver being on hand when the contracts were canceled, it would explain why someone was shooting at the government agents. Hey, Pat, I found him. There's a production record. Good. Yeah, I was right. They did have silver bullion on hand. Will you quit playing Sherlock Holmes? Uh, I think I know what happened now, Stoney. When the Sherman Act was repealed, cutting off the silver subsidy, some smart guy got the idea of forging these cancellation contracts and sending them to the miners. But what would that get them? Well, they evidently knew that these mines had stocks of bullion on hand. Well, no immediate market for silver, they had to close down. Well, I'm following you step by step. What next? Well, the mine operators had to close down or go broke. Say, Stoney, if you had a ton and a half of silver bullion, what would you do with it? Are you kidding? I'd spend it. No, I don't mean that. If you couldn't spend it, what would you do with it? Well, if I couldn't spend it, I, I guess I'd hide it someplace and maybe I'd bury it. Right. And supposing you were the one that sent those forged cancellation notices for mine. Oh, I'm beginning to see the light. Then I could come back and dig up the silver. Right. Let's go outside and have a look around. A uh, little treasure hunt? Come on, pirate. that feeling that we're being watched again. Locate him? No. Those shots are too high to be meant for us. Nobody's that bad a shot. Hey, Pat! That's what they're shooting at! Quick, over here. Too close for comfort. Let's run down that killer. Wait. Whoever tried to blow us up will probably come back to see what luck they had. Yeah, that's right. Keep down. Hey, Pop. Somebody just went in the back door of the office. Come on. I'd ask you the same thing. Well, I, I... I rode over the hill the back way. I heard the dad blame the explosion and I come to see what happened. Yeah, somebody blew up the powder magazine tried to blow us up with it. No. Now, who do an ornery thing like that? Particularly to a nice, handsome fella like Stoney. Mammy, your desk was ransacked last night. Do you know who did it? I, I don't know. Yes, you do. You know who did it and what they wanted. Now, come on, why don't you tell us? It ain't none of your darn business, that's why. Stoney, you take over. Come here, Mamie. 
Now, uh, you didn't see what was taken, but you knew what it was. Mamie? What was it? His map. Hassiampas? As soon as it was gone, you knew that he took it. Yeah, and you started right out after him. Hey, you know, you're as bright as a $2 pistol. <laughs> you sure had her figured. Say, about this map, what was it? I don't know. Hassiampa gave it to me about a week ago. He told me to take care of it. He said, if anything ever happened to him, it'd make me rich. Yeah, I thought it was something like that. Said, did you ever get a good look at it? Yep, but I don't set much stock in those things. I wouldn't remember it. Could you take us where Hassiamp is? Well, I guess so. He usually camps by the West Fork of the Creek. Well, let's go see if we can find him. All right, my horse is out back. Time you cut the circle. Right. I'll give you three minutes. We'll try to surprise you. All right, but don't open up till I get in position. Right. Stoney, what took you so long? Well, you see, or a horror, well, well, you see, I was fighting him down here the sun was in my eye, and every time That's I... That's enough. Come on, let's get up here. Oh, uh, just as I thought. The canceled contracts that you forged and sent to the miners. You can't prove nothing. The proof is the fact that you tried to steal them back. What'd you try to kill old man Simpson for? Why, he watched me hide the silver and then dug it up and brought it here. Hey, heard a regular war going on up here. Why, it's Pete. I thought so. Why did you blast poor old Hatsiampa? Because that old desert rat, Hatsiampa, stole about a ton and a half of silver bullion from Pete and buried it here. You see, Mimi, Pete found out somehow that the government was going to quit buying silver. So he figured out this way to get rich. You don't say. 
Yes, and without government contracts, the miners couldn't operate. So they closed down. And when the miners out of work, the town's emptied, and the silver was hidden and left behind. Hey, I got it. I just remembered who it was that left up their piece of paper at my place. It was Pete. And it was him that tried to find oh, you a winner. Oh, all right, Mamie. Mamie. Easy, easy, Mamie. Mamie. Aren't you glad you fought him instead of her? Yeah, yeah. thanks. <laughs> here, take care of him. Come here. What are you doing, Mamie? Uh, you fellas go along and get old Hasiyama. Take him over to my place. I'll be there directly. I'm uh, locating a mining claim. Strikes me this is a mighty likely spot for a silver mine. <laughs> it sure is. Providing the mining operators don't catch you. But I guess possession is nine tenths of the law. <laughs> yep, and the girl's got to look out for herself, especially when she's figuring on getting hit. <laughs> Ain't that so, Stoney? Yep. Well, I I think I better uh, go take care of old Half the Amp. I'll 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 see him. He sure is a pretty thing, but I guess he's kind of shy. He sure is, Mamie, and that's for sure. <laughs> you enjoyed this episode of Cowboy G-Men, brought to you free here on the internet by Westerns on the Web, your home for free, classic, family-friendly Western television shows and movies. Thanks again for joining us. Come by and see us. We hope to see you on down the trail. Have a great day.